Hi, and welcome to the business of being a virtual assistant. I'm your host, Tiffany Parson, and you're watching episode number 252. And I'm just going to double check my notes. Yes, episode number 252. Thank you guys for returning. And if this is your very first time watching, thank you for watching and listening. So today I want to talk about efficiencies in your virtual assistant business, specifically how we're incorporating AI. Excuse me. So um, I'm sure by now most of you have tinkered with chat GPT and maybe some other AI software. I um, have tinkered with chat chat GPT. I'm currently testing out Read AI, which is a note taking. I hate to just minimize it to just note taking because it does a lot more. Um, but it's a note taking AI that's connected to Zoom. And I'm currently testing that out. It's pretty interesting because what it does is it's like your assistant in a Zoom meeting. And it it follows you in. And if, you know, if there is a waiting room or no room at all, it's just going to come. If you're there, it's going to come with you. There's some settings that you can go in and update to tell it, you know, what meetings to go to, what meetings not to, but I'm, I'm learning how it, how it all works. I thought it would, when it followed me into the zoom meeting that it would ask, do you want me to be in this meeting. Instead, it just comes uh, because once it's connected to your Zoom account, and I think I also connected it to my Google Calendar, any Zoom meetings on that calendar, it automatically knows to come. I mean, it's just fascinating, but a little scary to a point that this is even possible. Uh, So it gives very, a whole transcript of everything. It even breaks down who talked the most, the percentage of the conversation. It may even summarize it. Like I said, I'm currently testing it out. I had (laughs) an embarrassing moment with it. Uh, I was in a meeting with a new client and this was their staff meeting. And I was, um, my team and I, we were part of that meeting And here comes the read AI notes. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And they let it in, came in. And then the first thing it puts in chat, you know, this is read AI notes. You know, um, it's basically saying, hi, this is read AI notes. I'm with Tiffany and I'm going to be recording this call. And it's recording your call. It's like, oh gosh. The client didn't say anything, but I was embarrassed by that because I'm like, um, trying to test it out and see how it all works. And I see it's almost like somebody being right behind you. You know, as soon as you go through the door, they come busting through the door right behind you. It's like, okay. Uh, But anyway, how can this help you be efficient in your virtual assistant business? How can AI tools help you be efficient? It's pretty obvious especially with it um, being able to transcribe things or like with chat GPT, come up with different ideas. It's to come alongside us, not to replace us. We shouldn't be fearful that any of these AI tools are going to replace us. It's going to help us do our jobs even better. AI cannot replace human touch. To even have the software, we've a human has to sign up for it. A human has to interact with it with chat GPT. We have to give it prompts. We have to give it all the details for it to spit something back to us. And then once it's spit it back to us, we need to go back in and personalize it, make it ours. We shouldn't be copying and pasting directly from chat GPT onto blog posts, onto social media. No, we should be making it ours. It's like reading a book, writing a report on that book, but you basically are just writing word for word what was in the book. No, you got to make it yours. You make it personal to you to the point where no one can even tell that you use an AI tool to begin with. That That's how it should be. Um, most recently, I have had uh, different discovery calls and people mentioning 
and asking how we're incorporating chat GPT or them sharing with us how they're using it. Had a situation where a potential client had another VA. They were basically just putting stuff in chat GPT, chat GPT spits out its thing and literally just pasting that directly and using that as a social media post. You might not think that people can't tell, but you can tell when what's written is not written just for that person's profile or page or website that it's on. It does it, it lacks personality. That's the word I'm looking for. It lacks personality. There's a certain way that you speak. There's a certain way that you write. And if a robot is spitting out words, the robot doesn't know how you do either one of those things. That's where a personal touch comes in. That's where if we're crafting content for our clients, we may have the robotic version, but then we need to add their personality. We need to add their flavor to how they say things. Otherwise, people be able to just go down their profile, go through a few blog posts and realize this doesn't even seem like a human being wrote this. So people will be able to tell. So these AI tools are help are helping us be more efficient in what we do. So if you have not jumped on the AI tools, test it out, see how you like it, experiment with it. Like I said, I signed up for the, I just happened, I was waiting on um, the Zoom to start. I saw the apps. I was like, what is this one? It just clicked on it and that started the trial and it's a year trial. Now, I don't know if that was a glitch in the system or what, but when I went to see when my trial was up, because I expected it not to keep following me after a couple of weeks, It said June 2024 is how long I have for this trial. So anyway, test out some of these AI tools, see how they work. Be aware of what's being discussed out on the interwebs. You should be in the know. So when a client asks you about it, you can say, oh, yeah, you know, and share a little bit about what you've been doing or how you've been tinkering with it. Also, this doesn't have anything to do with efficiencies, but I want to mention threads. Threads is the latest thing. And I think, I don't know, it just came out. It feels like days ago, but it could have been longer than that. Um, Set up an account from your Instagram. Tinker with that. Um, So you can be aware of what's going on. That's if it's relative to your virtual assistant business, meaning you provide some type of online service to clients. It's related to social media. If you're doing things related to their blogs, anything related to creative, especially creative and um, technology, really administrative as well. If it's all the categories for a virtual assistant work. Um, So we should not be the ones on the sidelines waiting for other people to tell us what is it like. We should be jumping in and experiencing it for ourselves so we can share what it's like. So when clients ask us, what is Threads? How is it different from Twitter? You know, these are things that we can discuss and answer for them. Um, Getting back to uh, some of these efficiencies is always be looking for an opportunity to make something better. Even if you have to go back to an old way of doing something, maybe the old way you did it was better for you. The efficiencies that you're looking for in your business have nothing to do with me, nothing to do with anybody else. It's all about you and how you work, but you should always be looking for a way to make the things flow smoother. As you grow in your business, you'll encounter different little bumps because you've never been this way before. This is a new road. New road has a bump you don't know about. There's a big old speed bump. Maybe there's a stop sign. Maybe there's a yield sign. You don't know about it yet. So when you encounter it, don't think of it as, oh man, I messed up. I should have known about this. No, it's an opportunity. 
It's an opportunity to learn and to figure out, is there a way I could have done that better? How can we make this thing go a little smoother? You know, that was a rough ride. What can I do to make this better? Maybe it's an AI tool. Maybe it's writing something down. Maybe it's recording something. Look for opportunities to make things flow a little smoother in your business and faster. You always want to be improving and getting better at what you do. This is why all these different softwares and new things come out because technology is forever changing. They're always looking for a new way, a better way, a different way. We should be doing the same thing in our virtual assistant business. Now, I'm curious how you are utilizing some of these AI tools. So share with me if you're on YouTube in the comments, if you're on Facebook, share with me there. And if you're on neither one of those things, you're like, look, Tiffany, I'm in the gym listening to this podcast. Then when you get a chance, shoot me a message at Tiffany at TiffanyParson.com and let me know how you're using the AI tools. And if you're on the email list, even easier, just simply hit reply to this email that you get um, this notification for this particular podcast. And if you're not on the emails list yet, I don't know why. Maybe this is your very first time. Let's say it's your first time. It's the only reason why you shouldn't be on the list Uh, to get on there. You want to text three, three, seven, seven, seven. The phrase is VA start. This stands for virtual assistant start that gets you on the list. It also gives you 15 known secrets to get started in your virtual assistant business. And it gets you in the top of the line, the front of the line to know when episodes are coming out, when any new webinars, classes, mentorships, all that good stuff is coming out. So I hope to see you soon. You have a wonderful and fantastic day.